supply and demand. Supply and demand form the foundation of all market economies. Demand represents how much of a good or service consumers want at different prices, while supply reflects how much producers are willing to provide. The point where these two forces meet is called market equilibrium, determining the product's price and quantity sold. When demand rises and supply stays constant, prices tend to increase. When supply grows faster than demand, prices typically fall. Changes in income, consumer preferences, production costs, or technology can shift these curves, affecting the equilibrium. This dynamic interaction explains everything from everyday price fluctuations to large-scale economic trends, showing how millions of individual decisions create the collective rhythm of the global economy, markets. A market is any system or environment where buyers and sellers exchange goods, services, or assets. Markets can be physical, like a farmer's market or car dealership, or digital, like Amazon or the stock exchange. Their main purpose is to coordinate economic activity by matching supply with demand through prices. Prices act as signals, rising when demand outpaces supply and falling when goods are abundant, guiding both consumers and producers to make efficient decisions. There are many types of markets, including product markets, labor markets, and financial markets, each operating under different levels of competition and regulation. In essence, markets are the decentralized engines that allocate resources, encourage innovation, and keep modern economies functioning smoothly. Consumer behavior. Consumer behavior studies how individuals and households make choices about what to buy, when to buy, and how much to spend. It's shaped by factors such as income, preferences, advertising, social influence, and psychology. At its core lies the idea of utility, the satisfaction people gain from consuming goods or services. Consumers aim to maximize utility given limited income, choosing combinations that bring the greatest overall benefit. However, real-world behavior often deviates from strict rationality. Emotions, habits, and biases, like impulse buying or fear of missing out, can strongly affect decisions. Understanding consumer behavior helps businesses set prices and design marketing strategies, while economists use it to predict spending trends and demand across entire economies. Opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative you give up when making a decision. Because resources like time, money, and labor are limited, every choice involves trade-offs. For example, spending $50 on a dinner means you can't use that same $50 to buy a book or save it. In economics, understanding opportunity cost helps individuals, businesses, and governments make efficient decisions, focusing on what yields the greatest overall benefit. It's not just about money. It includes lost time, missed experiences, or foregone investments. By thinking in terms of opportunity costs, we recognize that doing one thing always means not doing something else, making it one of the most powerful tools for rational decision-making. Trade. Trade is the exchange of goods, services, or resources between people, businesses, or countries. It allows participants to specialize in what they produce most efficiently and to obtain other goods through exchange, leading to overall higher productivity and living standards. The key idea behind trade is comparative advantage. Even if one country is better at producing everything, both sides benefit when each focuses on what they do best relative to others. International trade expands markets, encourages innovation, and provides access to a wider variety of products. However, it can also create challenges such as job displacement or dependence on foreign supply chains. Ultimately, trade connects global economies, making nations more interdependent and wealthier through shared efficiency. GDP Gross domestic product, GDP is the total value of all goods and services produced within a country's borders over a specific period, usually a year or a quarter. It serves as the primary indicator of an economy's size and overall health. Economists measure GDP in three main ways, production, income, and expenditure, which together provide a full picture of national economic activity. When GDP grows, it signals expansion, higher employment, and increased prosperity. When it shrinks, it often indicates recession. GDP can be measured in nominal terms, current prices, or real terms adjusted for inflation. Although widely used, GDP has limits. It doesn't capture inequality, environmental damage, or unpaid labor, making it an incomplete measure of true well-being. Inflation. Inflation is the general rise in prices across an economy over time, which reduces the purchasing power of money. When inflation occurs, each dollar buys fewer goods and services than before. Economists typically measure it through indexes like the Consumer Price Index CPI or Producer Price Index PPI. Moderate inflation is normal in a growing economy and can even encourage spending and investment. However, high inflation erodes savings, raises living costs, 
and can destabilize financial systems. Conversely, deflation, a fall in prices, can discourage spending and lead to economic stagnation. Central banks, like the U.S. Federal Reserve, manage inflation through monetary policy, adjusting interest rates and controlling the money supply to maintain stable prices and sustainable economic growth. Interest rates. Interest rates represent the cost of borrowing money or the reward for saving it. When you take out a loan, the interest rate determines how much extra you'll repay. When you deposit money in a bank, it's what you earn in return. In broader terms, interest rates influence nearly every aspect of the economy, from mortgages and business investment to credit card debt and government borrowing. Central banks, such as the Federal Reserve, adjust benchmark interest rates to manage inflation and stimulate or slow down economic growth. Lower rates encourage borrowing and spending, while higher rates curb inflation but can cool the economy. Because they shape financial behavior and market confidence, interest rates are among the most powerful tools in economics. Federal Reserve The Federal Reserve, often called the Fed, is the central bank of the United States and one of the most influential financial institutions in the world. Its primary goals are to maintain price stability, promote maximum employment, and ensure a stable financial system. The Fed manages the money supply and influences interest rates through monetary policy tools such as open market operations, setting the discount rate, and adjusting reserve requirements for banks. By raising or lowering rates, it can slow inflation or stimulate growth. The Fed also supervises banks and acts as a lender of last resort during financial crises. Its decisions affect everything from mortgage costs to stock prices, making it a cornerstone of U.S. and global economic stability. Unemployment Unemployment occurs when people who are willing and able to work cannot find jobs. It's one of the most important indicators of economic health because it reflects both productivity and living standards. Economists identify several types, frictional unemployment, temporary between jobs, structural unemployment caused by technological or industry shifts, and cyclical unemployment due to economic downturns. High unemployment often signals a recession as businesses cut production and hiring. Conversely, very low unemployment can create labor shortages and wage inflation. Governments and central banks monitor unemployment closely using fiscal and monetary policy to stimulate job creation when needed. Ultimately, a balanced, sustainable employment level supports economic stability, household income, and overall social well-being. Recession A recession is a significant decline in overall economic activity, typically lasting for at least two consecutive quarters of falling GDP. During a recession, consumer spending, business investment, and industrial production all decrease, leading to job losses and rising unemployment. Companies often cut costs, wages stagnate, and confidence in the economy drops. Central banks and governments respond with lower interest rates, stimulus packages, and increased public spending to encourage recovery. Recessions are a natural part of the business cycle, often following periods of rapid growth or financial excess. While painful in the short term, they can also reset unsustainable imbalances, clear and efficient businesses, and lay the groundwork for renewed economic expansion. Housing market. The housing market represents the buying, selling, and renting of homes and properties, and it's one of the most important parts of any economy. Housing affects wealth, savings, and overall financial stability, since homes are often a family's largest asset. Prices are driven by supply and demand. When demand for homes outpaces available supply, prices rise. When supply exceeds demand, they fall. Factors like interest rates, income levels, and government policies greatly influence housing trends. A booming housing market can stimulate jobs in construction and finance, while a collapse can trigger recessions, as seen in 2008. Because housing ties personal finances to global markets, its performance often reflects broader economic health and consumer confidence. Stock market. The stock market is a system where investors buy and sell ownership shares, or stocks, in publicly traded companies. It serves as a key way for businesses to raise money and for individuals to build wealth. Stock prices reflect expectations about a company's future profits, as well as broader economic conditions. When investors feel optimistic, prices rise, creating bull markets. When fear dominates, prices fall, leading to bear markets. The stock market influences consumer confidence, retirement savings, and business investment. Although it can be volatile in the short term, over time, it tends to grow with the economy. Beyond finance, the stock market acts as a real-time indicator of public sentiment about the economy's present and future direction. Economic bubbles. An economic bubble occurs when the prices of assets, such as stocks, housing, or cryptocurrencies, rise far beyond their real value due to excessive speculation and investor optimism. During a bubble, demand is fueled by the belief that prices will keep climbing, attracting even more buyers and pushing prices higher. Eventually, reality catches up. Confidence fades, demand collapses, 
and prices crash, often wiping out massive amounts of wealth. Famous examples include the tulip mania of the 1600s, the dot-com bubble of the early 2000s, and the housing bubble of 2008. Bubbles illustrate how psychological factors, herd behavior, and easy credit can distort markets, turning ordinary booms into destructive financial crises when they inevitably burst. Wealth gap. The wealth gap refers to the unequal distribution of assets, income, and opportunities among individuals or groups within a society. It reflects differences in access to education, property, inheritance, and investment returns. Over time, wealth tends to concentrate because those with assets can earn more through interest, capital gains, and business ownership, while others rely solely on wages. A widening wealth gap can slow economic mobility, reduce consumer spending, and increase social tension. Economists debate how to address it through taxation, education, wage policy, or expanded access to capital. While some inequality can motivate innovation and effort, extreme disparities threaten long-term economic stability and fairness, shaping political debates and policy decisions worldwide.